Good day and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I'm your host, the Voice of Reason. All right, in this episode, uh, I wanted to talk about the ability to counter drones, the ability to eliminate drones from the battlefield. Um, what, uh, what capabilities exist? What are the best systems? How do you do it? Well, the, uh, the, the biggest issue in countering the current drone threat, and this is uh, everything from the Chinese-made drones, the Wing Loon, uh, which is much like uh, the United States, a Predator or Reaper. Uh, they're, they're bigger drones. They, uh, they operate at, at higher altitudes. Usually, uh, you're, you're looking at about 25,000 feet um, is, is their uh, uh, operational ceiling where they're able to see targets on the ground with their, their uh, thermal optics and, uh, and in some cases radars. And, uh, and then obviously being able to use their uh, ordinances, which are usually laser-guided uh, missiles uh, or uh, uh, laser-guided bombs. And um, th those are, are bigger drones, so you would inherently, uh, you, you, you could see those drones uh, with, with decent radars because they're bigger drones. Um, obviously, Iran was able to shoot down uh, the uh, the Global Hawk. That's a drone, well, not an armed drone. Uh, Iranian uh, air defense systems, Iranian radars, uh, were able to see this aircraft flying uh, at a at a, tr a tremendous height and uh, utilize an, an air defense missile to, to shoot it down. When you're dealing with countries that don't have great uh, air defense systems and they are trying to shoot down especially uh, smaller drones uh, that's where it becomes uh, more difficult or even larger drones as well in some cases so let's say you're a, a, a nation who doesn't possess um, a, a great uh, air defense system but you have manned portable uh, such as uh, uh, American-made Stingers or uh, SA-18s from Russia, uh, blowpipes, uh, so forth and so on. Well, the problem with those systems is the ability to see these drones in the thermal s spectrum. They don't they don't give off a lot of of thermal radiation where they can be seen by these man portable uh, systems. The manned portable systems are really designed to uh, go after uh, the heat signature of larger targets, such as a big uh, helicopter or a, uh, a a fighter jet or something that is generating um, heat. Some of these drones just simply do not have the heat signature where they can be seen um, by these manned portable uh, systems. So there's just not a lot of options if a state does not have uh, the ability to track these targets um, with uh, really good radars. And the problem is, is the smaller the drone gets, the more difficult it is for these systems to be seen on radars. And uh, like in the case of the Iranians, they got lucky because it, you know it was a global hawk. It's a big, very large uh, drone. It's huge. I mean, it's it's probably uh, uh, near the size of a, of a of a passenger jet. I mean, it's huge. So you can see it. It's there <laughs> on radar. Now, when when we get into the the realm of the uh, of uh, the the Reaper or the Chinese uh, wing loon, um, you have to look at where they're operating at. And uh, if a, uh, a U.S. Um, Reaper was trying to operate over Iran, it's big enough that the Iranians could detect that drone and shoot it down. 
um, or they could launch a uh, a fighter aircraft to to shoot it down. Um, in the case of some of the Turkish drones, now we we kind of get into that realm where did the Armenians have uh, air defense systems? Yes, they did. They were actually operating S three hundreds, but the S three hundred was not really designed to see such a small target. And the in the uh, the uh, Turks and the Azeris were operating um, much smaller drones than the United States uh, Reaper or the uh, Wing Loon. Uh, they just were not um, the the air defense systems, uh, the Russian air defense systems um, have difficulty seeing these smaller drones that the Turks were deploying. And uh, in the case of uh, Ethiopia and Tigray, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, state forces inside of Tigray just do not have these air defense systems to, uh, to take down really uh, anything that is flying with the exception of maybe uh, man pads but again these man pads are designed to engage uh, aircraft that have thermal signatures so if there's no thermal signature um, it's going to be difficult to shoot down those drones I hope that makes sense so um, there's there's not a lot of options unless you get into the realm of kind of the gr into into great powers like the United States, um, who has invested a lot of money into the uh, capability of shooting down drones. There's uh, the the U.S. doesn't talk a lot about it, but obviously the United States has the Aegis system, especially on its ships. You know those can definitely detect drones of of a multitude of sizes. They also have the the rolling uh, airframe missile, and then they also have, uh, and some of the ships are now deploying lasers that can definitely uh, intercept and shoot down drones. But again, you're talking about a, a a massive monetary investment to be able to have the capability of shooting down smaller sized drones. The Israelis uh, have have invested in. Uh, a, a, a varying technologies that have the ability to shoot down drones. So the Iron Dome um, has the ability to see drones. The Israelis have uh, radars, advanced radar systems that can see drones. They also have um, very advanced, um, very sensitive uh, thermal imaging systems that could also see drones as well, but again, you're you're talking about fairly advanced powers that uh, have that ability to to actually see drones. But again, if you're if you're operating, uh, you know, in this area in Tigray, if you're operating um, in Yemen, and you have a degraded air defense system with really your only option is manned portable systems and these smaller drones or bigger drones because remember the, these manned portable systems have difficulty seeing even some of these larger drones because they just don't produce a heat signature so you're going to have a challenge in, in, in shooting down these drones so your next option is is having that advanced capability uh, in terms of radars, which a lot of nations just simply don't possess. And then if you have the radars, you have to have the uh, weapon systems to then be launched and to uh, to take down uh, said drones. Um, I think uh, some systems would be like the uh, Israeli uh, Spider uh, that... Uh, that could be used to uh, take down drones, but again, it's a very expensive system. Um, it's a system that uses both radar guided systems and uh, and uh, heat seeking systems as well. But but again, very expensive, and um, not a lot of nations can 
uh, procure said systems. So it's a it's a very challenging environment um, to uh, interdict drones. Another uh, technology that is probably the best way to defeat drones is to uh, take out their data links. If a drone uh, has the does not have the ability to communicate with its ground station, then uh, that ground station cannot guide that drone, and the payload specialist, as I have talked about in another episode, uh, cannot see the target, so the drone is ineffective. Or the ability to jam a GPS, and that could be another uh, method as well. But there's just not been a great deal of success with those systems. Uh, the Armenians uh, believed that uh, they had a system that could possibly jam the data links and the GPSs of the Azeri Turkish drones, but uh, that system was uh, not successful. And uh, the Armenians were rather upset over that because they paid a lot of money for that system and it simply did not work. Now, did the Russians sell them a bill of goods that they knew that did not work or they really thought it would work. I'm not sure on that one. But uh, I think, uh, you know, in the future it's going to get even more complicated with AI because then you're going to be able to launch a drone and that drone is not going to possibly need a human in the loop, so to speak. That drone could take off, go over a designated uh, area and uh, have the artificial intelligence to identify an enemy target, identify a certain type of tank, identify a certain type of artillery piece, identify even a human being carrying a certain type of weapon. Um, and then that, uh, that target could be engaged by the AI. So that would make you know, the whole concept of jamming data links or uh, GPS are redundant because it is a an AI system that is then operating the aircraft. And that's that's not too far down the road. That's the next level of a drone technology that we will soon be seeing.